What's up, everybody? Jordan here, back with another episode of the Fitness, Food, and Freedom Podcast. This is episode 472 of the podcast, closing in on 500 episodes. Quite an exciting time here in the little basement studio that I record the show. Growing the YouTube audience a little bit. Um, nothing spectacular, but daily growth nonetheless on the Stoltz Fit YouTube channel, which is very exciting to see. Posting some good home gym content over there. Some short videos with some little tips and tricks as well as training vlogs, which should be implemented pretty soon. It's honestly something I don't really like doing, filming myself train. Uh, kind of like just to focus on the train and get in and out of there in you know 60 minutes or less. So uh, it's not something I enjoy doing. So we're gonna find a workaround with that actually and get that kind of implemented. Um, today's episode, is about supplements. This is something I don't talk about very often and give specific recommendations to. I believe there's kind of like tiers of supplements that you can use. And I like supplements. Uh, it's something I like purposely try not to spend too much money on because I know the benefits you get from supplements are quite small for the amount of money you pay. There are a few though that definitely are bang for your buck. And actually this year in 2024, I'm kind of taking the plunge a little bit deeper into the supplement realm to see what kind of benefits I can get in my training from a little bit better supplementation, more focused around optimizing my training sessions. I'm gonna talk about that today and give you my top five supplements for better fitness progress. I think this is going to be very useful for you if you're a little bit overwhelmed by the supplement space. The whole mission of the podcast is really to simplify, boil down, uh, reduce you know everything that's very complicated in the fitness industry to core principles and guidelines that you need to follow to see long-term growth and progress. And you really don't need all the complex things you think you do and that people market to you. I wanna keep things pretty basic, actionable, and short so you know what to run with and focus on to actually see progress and that I want to make 2024 the year of best progress in your life for you and for me and that's what the whole mission is right now um, as far as my own fitness journey something I like to start the show with talking about my own progress and goals and everything I bumped up the calories for the gaining phase just a little bit we started I reviewed this last week left a cut went into a bulk for lack of a better term, I call it a gaining phase. Um, calories were at like 3,400 and actually bumped them a lot up to about 3,850, which is a large increase. I have this weird, it just comes from kind of knowing my body and metabolism and everything, uh, where I have this weird tendency to like have a huge range of maintenance calories, I guess is a way to put it, where I can maintain on 3,000 calories all the way up to 3,500 calories depending on where I am on that scale. It's almost like as my food increases, my activity increases naturally and burns off that extra food. Digestion maybe plays a role. Bowel movements play a role, you know, just to be straightforward. Uh, when they're more frequent, you know, you might need more food to kind of be absorbed. And, you know, it's, it's weird. It's just something about knowing my body, knowing that I need a little bit more food to actually put on muscle and optimize training. The bump in calories up to 3850 was primarily to fuel performance because like I said, I am trying to optimize training with supplementation. So I wanted to make sure diet, which has a way bigger effect than supplementation, is dialed in as well to optimize training. If diet and sleep aren't dialed in perfectly, Supplementation will do next to nothing. You will get a little boost, but you're not going to see the progress if your sleep and diet's not not cranked in perfectly. Plus, this phase is gonna be short anyways, right? I'm probably gonna be in maintenance at the beginning of the summer and probably weight loss at the end of the summer again. So I don't have that long to be gaining. It's probably gonna be something like three months. So because of that, I might as well take full advantage of it, right? If I gain a little bit of extra fat, I can lose that when it's time to lose that. And honestly, I don't really think that'll be the case. I'm still really sticking to a basic meal plan structure. So I'm not adding in a ton of 
meals and foods and high calorie options and going out to eat and all this stuff. It's not dirty in that sense. I have a pretty basic meal plan structure where I eat the same breakfast every single day, the same lunch or two lunches every single day, have some variety of a snack in there and then um, dinner is different every single day. And then usually a snack after dinner that's more of like a protein shake or protein ice cream. The whole meal structure, I might as well go over it. Breakfast is going to be some kind of hot cereal with seeds, nuts, fruit, you know, banana, maybe some honey, peanut butter, all mixed in a big bowl and then a whey protein shake on the side. And then lunch is usually eggs and rice or eggs and potatoes or um, eggs, vegetables, toast, like that kind of thing. Um, I like eggs actually as a lunch. It's just an easy protein source to whip up. And then dinner changes every night. Sometimes I'll have a bagel after training in the afternoon. And like I said, protein shake or protein ice cream at night. I really notice huge benefits with calories up a little bit higher personally. Like especially with mood and energy. It's just so much better when for me calories are like 18 to 20 times body weight, which for me is pushing 4,000 calories. That is when I see the huge difference. When it's more like 15, 16, so if I'm at 3,000 to 3,500, it's better than diet calories, but it's still a little bit like I can out train that diet if that makes sense and still get a lot of fatigue built up. And, you know, sometimes I'm kind of hangry even with that many calories. It's different for everybody. Keep in mind, I'm super active. I mean, I weight train six days a week, you know, run probably two hours a week combined into different zone two sessions, walk 10,000 plus steps every single day, work manual labor at, in the afternoon. Like I do a lot of stuff. So that is why those calories need to get that high. Um, but anyways, if it's you, I'd say probably start around 15 to 16 times your body weight for gaining phase increase from there if you need to, but it's good to try you know, like 18 to 20 times your body weight, see how you feel, what your energy and mood is like, and then what changes are made. Um, what I'm seeing is massive training improvements with increasing those calories. A little bit of carbs goes a long way, folks, especially if those are timed around training. So one, I'll give you a couple examples, I guess. One of them was a density training day, which essentially means I'm trying to get 100 reps of a dumbbell bench press under 10 minutes or so, um, or under 12 minutes is what I had it at with a certain weight, right? And using the same weight for all the sets, building up to 100 and whatever number of reps I want to do to get there and trying to beat that time of 12 minutes before bumping my calories up. I was using 75 pound dumbbells and was able to get it to like 14 minutes. Now I just ended this cycle of training and changed my workouts up. But the last one before changing, I used 80 pound dumbbells and finished it in 11 minutes. So I was able to knock off a lot of time, which meant I did more reps and bump up the weight that I did. So that was a huge improvement. Weight increases overall on stuff like squats, chest pressing, um, back movements, all that stuff. We're seeing lots of big weight jumps just from increasing the calories alone. Okay, so that's my training. I, you know, I talk about this stuff all the time. So I'll get into the topic of today's show. Sorry for making you guys wait. Um, maybe I should start adding like show notes in so you can skip me talking about my own journey if you want to. Um, today's topic is supplements, like I said. This is inside my supplement cabinet. What do I have? What do I use? What are the top five you should use for better progress? I kind of cheated the system here, guys, because I'm going to give you the supplements I take. And when I say top five, it's really five categories, not five exact supplements. You can draw from these categories all you want, but um, these are the categories that I think you can divide supplements into kind of on tiers. And I ranked these from one to five. So starting now is the most important thing you should add with your supplementation. The last one I go over is maybe the least important thing. And I'll review what I take. So the first thing, top thing you need to look out for with your supplements is to fill dietary deficiencies. Me, for example, I live in the Midwest, especially in the winter, don't get as much sun as I should and need. 
to get optimal vitamin D. So I take vitamin D, 5,000 IUs a day, and um, that's something I take. I take a multivitamin, which covers any possible gaps in dietary deficiency, which may or may not be helpful. I think of it like a pretty cheap insurance policy. And then fish, fish oil, because I just don't eat fish. I've tried to implement fish in my diet regularly. It's just, I just don't enjoy it, honestly, and never have really liked fish. So um, unless it's sushi, I just don't eat fish. So I include a lot of fish oil per day as well. Um, I don't know the dose of it, but three capsules a day of fish oil. And those are my kind of fill in the gaps of dietary deficiencies. If you're short on potassium, magnesium, you know, iron, whatever you are deficient in via blood work and symptoms, you would want to fill those with supplements that are pretty cheap, honestly, uh, just for basic vitamins from your store. So that's the first thing that we want to focus on. And the most important thing, filling those deficiencies will give you so much more energy and results than anything else because you're going to optimize your health and your energy and everything's going to be way more way better because of it. this is even more important in cuts and weight loss phases because you have less food to draw from for nutrients um, i'm a big micro, micronutrient proponent i think a lot of people in the space don't focus enough on vitamins and minerals and it shows number two is macro help supplements that's kind of the next tier um, for me, this just means protein powder. That's the only thing I use that would be considered macro help to help me hit macros that I need for the day. So protein, carbs, fat are the macros. You could implement carb powders if you needed extra carbs, like in your workout or something. I definitely don't use carb powders. I prefer to eat my carbs. I mean, I bagel, a, a, a toasted bagel is my carb powder. I'll eat that whenever I need a quick hit of carbs. Sometimes have a little bit of juice, but very, very rarely. Um, carb powders, I just don't use, but you could implement those fat. You would never need like a pure fat source, but protein powder should be in your cabinet. A whey protein powder, whey isolate or whey concentrate is perfect. And that will help you kind of add protein to any meal. That's how I see it. Like, for example, in the morning, I talk about this hot cereal meal I have. It's very micronutrient focused, seeds, nuts, fruit you know, honey, the hot cereal itself, peanut butter, all this stuff, but no protein in it really. So I put a whey protein shake on the side, drink that first, eat the hot cereal, and then that adds, you know, 30, 40 grams of protein to my meal, whereas I wouldn't have had more than 10 if I didn't include that. Plus I, at the end of the night, could drink a little bit of protein or have some protein ice cream made with the powder to bump up protein for the day. Protein is very, very important for muscle gaining weight loss, muscle retention, keeping yourself full and satiated. Don't skip on your protein. Don't underestimate it. Whey protein powder can help immensely. And I even find as a bonus tip, even if you're sensitive to dairy, whey protein might be fine because it's kind of a um, gut friendly version of dairy, I guess, or the part that's drawing from it isn't necessarily going to hurt your belly like milk. So try out whey. If it doesn't agree with you, try a plant-based protein, but uh, whey is definitely the best supplement out there, I think, besides just filling your dietary deficiencies. So number three is creatine. I put this in a category of its own. Technically, this is a performance supplement, uh, which is another category coming up. But I put creatine on its own just because it is the most studied performance supplement in history. There's virtually no side effects you know, for most people, you're not going to hurt your kidneys. You're not going to lose your hair. Nothing's going to happen bad with you. With taking creatine, it's pretty cheap too, for the most part. And it's pretty easy to take. You could take it in capsules, mix it in powder and your protein shakes or pre-workout or whatever. And you just need it for optimal performance. I think um, if you really want to optimize training, the amount you get even from something that has creatine naturally, like red meat, just isn't enough to actually completely fuel your creatine system. And what I mean by that is your body draws from an energy system, creatine phosphate system to create energy. So when you have a hard set in the gym, you have to replenish the creatine phosphate system. Taking creatine will help with that. It'll allow you to get you know a few more reps here and there, a little more weight here and there. That adds up big over time, trust me. 
Now, I actually personally used to take five grams per day, which is kind of the general recommended creatine dose. I have actually been experimenting here in 2024 by doubling that and taking eight to 10 grams per day. I take five grams pre-workout, five grams post-workout on most workout days. I skip one day on the weekend just because I don't train, but I, I might be just a bad responder to creatine. I never really noticed huge benefits from five grams per day. I kind of trusted there were because I was consistent with it. It's like, this is probably helping my performance. The science says so, the research says so, but I never truly noticed a huge bump in performance and, and energy until I increased it to eight to 10 grams. And that made a huge difference for me. So it's something you might want to play with. It's a, still a perfectly safe dose. You might want to try five first. And then if you don't feel much or notice much strength increases, try 10, go five pre-workout, five post-workout, see if that makes a difference. And, you know, maybe you're just a poor responder like me. It's something I think must exist to be a hyper or hypo responder to creatine. Number four is sleep supplements. I make this its own category because sleep is so important for recovery, muscle growth, even fat loss and stress management. You will only make so much progress if you're not dialing in sleep, I believe. And one of the most game-changing supplements for me is ZMA. When I started taking ZMA, I completely transformed how well I slept, how deep I slept, how quickly I fell asleep, and my recovery from training. That was the single supplement that made the biggest difference in my life. And I'm serious about that. It's a personal thing. I don't think everybody needs ZMA. I must have been deficient. Again, the dietary deficiencies make a huge difference. I must have been deficient in zinc, probably and magnesium, maybe and vitamin B altogether. And including all of that in a ZMA supplement pre-bed just skyrocketed my sleep levels and made it so much, so much better. So I love ZMA. I recommend it to anybody who has trouble falling asleep or getting deep sleep. Honestly, a big thing that helps sleep for me too is carbs, eating enough carbs and focusing on carb intake over just calories even makes a huge difference. If my carbs, you know, even if I have a lot of calories, let's say I'm in the 3000s or 4000 calorie range, which is a lot. If I have, you know, one to 200 grams of fat and maybe 400 grams of carbs in there, I don't get as good of sleep as if I tried to keep fats under a hundred and have like up to 600 grams of carbs per day. That increase in carbs just helps you sleep so good, especially if they're a couple hours before bedtime. So carbs are really powerful too. Try not to go super low carb or no carb for dinner. Um, try to have a heavy carb meal at night. I would actually be a little cautious of melatonin to use that. Um, be cautious of the dose that you're not super high dosing melatonin every single night. Melatonin is something your body produces naturally and I believe taking it exogenously in a supplement form will disrupt your own melatonin production. I'm a little bit cautious of it. I've tried melatonin for a while in the past and did sleep great, but also noticed I was groggy the next morning, less energy at first in the day, kind of relied on caffeine a little more to get me out of that melatonin slump and training was actually reduced a little bit because of that, that I guess fatigue or just grogginess. So be cautious of that. Try not to rely on melatonin and stuff like that if you can, and just focus on a good carb meal. Train, honestly train really, really hard so you're super tired. That helps too, ready to crash at night. Try to have the same wake up time every morning and so you get on a routinely schedule and then take some ZMA if you need it to feel that dietary deficiency. So now the fun part, which is kind of new for 2024 for me, is performance supplements. This is something like in the past, I would pretty much only take creatine and here and there, a pre-workout powder, some kind of caffeine, usually like coffee, espresso, an energy drink, or maybe a pre-workout powder you could find in any supplement store, even Walmart or something, you know, nothing too crazy. However, just for fun, 2024, I'm really trying to optimize the pre and post workout supplementation. I am focusing on like, wh how, what could I take and dose for true optimization? Yet I'm a cheap, cheap man. So I'm trying to 
you know, be Walter White here from Breaking Bad and um, looked at supplement labels that I trusted, supplement companies that I respect, and literally looked at every ingredient that was kind of the effective ingredients in that product. Obviously not, you know, little things thrown in, proprietary blends, flavorings, all that, ignored all that. Just look at what are the active ingredients and I bought all of these active ingredients in bulk. I have a big bin of bulk ingredients, and I should do a video of this sometime, all from bulksupplements.com. Um, they sell on Amazon too. I'll list all of them for you. I'm not holding back anything here. This might go over your head on what each thing does, but I'm just gonna list them off, and I think I can pronounce all of them quite well. We'll see. So pre-workout, I am taking a combination in various doses of caffeine, creatine, magnesium, potassium, folic acid, beetroot powder, tyrosine, betaine, beta alanine, and L citrulline malate. So these are various supplements that will help with performance, dopamine release, um, the pump, so better blood flow. Um, and then energy too with the caffeine and electrolytes with the magnesium potassium. A mixture of those in the right doses is what I'm taking pre-workout. And a cool part about that actually having them in bulk is that I can customize the batch that day if I want to change my workout. So for example, if I have a leg day, I might not add as much of the pump ingredients because I find I get like a lower back pump really bad in leg days. So that would help. I could just kind of increase the caffeine and just have more crazy energy that day. If I'm doing something like an arm day, I don't really need the caffeine. I'll drop the caffeine out completely and just focus on the pump ingredients, maybe increase those even. You can customize each day, which is kind of fun. And, you know, honestly, it's kind of overkill. It's a little weird. It's a lot of work. I don't really recommend doing this Walter White thing for everybody, but I'm having fun with it. We'll see if I see a big difference. So far, I think I do. But, um, and kind of surprisingly, I think I do, but we'll see long-term. Post-workout, I also take a supplement mix of, instead of eating right after post-workout, I'll take magnesium, potassium again to replenish the electrolytes you lost, creatine, again, I'm increasing my creatine dose, leucine to spike muscle protein synthesis without eating yet, and then another serving of beta and anhydrous. So, this mixture essentially replenishes energy, electrolytes, and activates mTOR pathways and muscle protein synthesis. So you're getting muscle growth kicked off before you start eating anything. I'll usually eat some carbs or maybe some protein, maybe about 30 to 60 minutes after drinking this. I'm actually feeling great on this. I think this could be a little bit of placebo and I wanna be transparent about that because I also increase my food so much. So I am very aware that the food has a bigger effect and sleep has a bigger effect than supplementation. So I think increasing my calories so far up probably is fueling my training more than the supplements are. But even if it is placebo, just doing this I think is driving better training and better progression. So I, I think it's helping. We'll see if it continues helping, helps me push past plateaus I normally have. I will say I haven't had hardly any bad training sessions this entire phase so far, which everyone has bad sessions. I've been essentially zero bad training sessions, which is awesome. I don't think if you're looking at performance supplements, this is probably a lot for you to comprehend and think about. Don't Walter White it if you don't like doing that kind of stuff. At the very least, take some caffeine. Caffeine will improve performance. It'll give you energy. Caffeine. Uh, creatine, some electrolytes, that goes a long way. I don't think you'll get a massive benefit anyways from pre-workouts and stuff like that. But if you do add a good pre-workout powder, uh, it could really help your energy. I also think like pre-workout helps your performance a little bit, gives you a lot of energy, and it's fun to have a lot of energy and drive at the gym. So why wouldn't you take pre-workout? You know, it's probably about gonna cost you about a dollar a day if you buy a pre-made powder maybe about half of that if you bulk ingredient buy like me. So, um, you know, you're taking a little investment, it's not too much money, but it will really help your workouts and make them more fun, which is a big part of adherence. 
post and intro workout, I would worry less about. Some food in you after a workout is a good idea. Just try to s- spike your muscle protein synthesis with leucine, meaning whey protein will have leucine in it because it's just an amino acid. Um, or you could take pure leucine in a drink like I do. Re- replenish your glycogen sometime after workout too, which just means eating some carbs. So you might drink a Gatorade or a carb powder during your training session, or you might just do like me and maybe an hour after you train, eat a bagel or something with some protein. And that's going to help both things all in one. And remember guys, again, I've said this a few times because I want you to keep it in mind. Supplements are the top of this pyramid, right? Of the importance period. Your base is food. Proper nutrition is going to be key. The next level is going to be sleep and stress management. If you're really stressed out all the time, cortisol is sky high, your sleep sucks, you're not going to make great progress no matter how dialed in you are and everything else and supplementation. Next, second to, or I guess third to last of the pyramid is training. Your training needs to be good, appropriate for you and something you can recover from. And then next, you need to have an active lifestyle. Be active, exercise, have a good routine in place. And then at the very top is supplements. We're talking about the cherry on top, very minor improvements in what you can see, but kind of fun to mess with nonetheless. I'll review the five here too before we uh, end the show. So number one, fill your dietary deficiencies. Number two, help yourself hit your macros. Creatine is number three, sleep supplements number four, performance supplements number five. So if you're breaking this down into simple, what do I go buy at the store on Amazon right now? Go buy at least a multivitamin and fish oil, possibly vitamin D, protein powder, creatine, ZMA if you need the help sleeping, try carbs first, and then a pre-workout powder that has some of the ingredients in it that I listed uh, in my little rant there. So those are some things you could try. It's been fun. 2024, I'm kind of in this let's optimize training type of mindset and just really have a lot of fun with it. Maybe I'll dial back later in the year, early next year to be more, you know, lifestyle oriented, but right now kind of going hard on it and enjoying it quite a bit. That's it for today's show, everybody. Thank you for joining me for episode 472 of the podcast. If you're listening on Spotify or Apple or whatever, you can always go watch video versions of this podcast, me sitting in the studio and talking to a mic um, on YouTube at Stoltz Fit. And if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe like this video and comment what you'd like me to do an episode on. I appreciate all you guys for joining me. Talk to you next time.